Take a walk round Norwich and you will see all sorts of references to strangers. The term originally meant someone who is not a native of a particular town or city. We are going to look at the story of the Elizabethan strangers and their legacy in the city of Norwich. In the 1560s, Norwich was suffering much economic hardship with its textile industry being hit by cheaper and better quality imports. At the same time, Protestants were looking for asylum from the Catholic Low Countries of Holland, Belgium and Luxembourg. The Low Countries and Norwich were geographically not very far apart. Norwich was England's second city at the time and as a Protestant country the Duke of Norfolk and the Corporation of Norwich invited and Queen Elizabeth authorised 30 Dutch masters and their families to settle in the city. Far more than this would eventually arrive and would quickly make up around a third of the city's population of about 12,000 people. Strangers Hall, now a museum, was used as a base and provided some accommodation with the incoming people settling in that area of the city either side of the Wensum. The integration didn't always go smoothly and there were occasional disputes with some strangers seen as smugglers. Sets of rules were introduced to regulate the community and ensure consistent standards for weaving. In 1578 Queen Elizabeth made a state visit to Norwich which could have been an attempt to show support for the strangers. Let's look now at the legacy of the strangers on the city of Norwich. Queen Street is on the edge of the city's nightlife area, but hidden behind the facade is the church of St Mary the Less. Left redundant after the dissolution of the monasteries, the church was rented to the strangers for sale of cloth. It was later taken over by the French-speaking strangers as a place of worship. The only two monuments in the church are to French stranger families. The Dutch strangers used Blackfriars Hall on St Andrew's Plain as a place of worship, holding their final service there as late as 1929. Their senior minister, Johannes Ellison, along with his wife Mary, were the only two English residents to have been painted by Rembrandt. Mentioning St Andrew's Plain brings to mind the fact that the word plain is of Dutch origin and the term plain for open spaces is not often seen elsewhere in the country, but it's regularly seen around Norwich. The arrival of strangers came at a time when the third person verb ending was changing from TH to S. Dutch influence resulted in the dropping of the S locally in Norwich and Norfolk. Dwile flonking is popular in Norfolk, apparently, and the word dwile comes from a Dutch word meaning mop. And while still on the subject of language, the strangers may well have been accused of talking double Dutch to indicate language not understood in the city, although the origins of the phrase are the subject of conjecture. The Dutch helped to rebuild a large area north of the Wensum, which had been destroyed by a fire which had started in Colgate in 1507. The Dutch brought their love of gardening to the city, this box garden at Strangers Hall being an example. In the 1630s they introduced tulips to England which were very popular and costly at the time and they rose in prominence again in the 19th century. Their influence is seen in architecture with these distinctive Dutch gables and these weaver's windows designed to bring maximum light to the weaver's loom. They replaced local pig fat with butter and introduced surnames such as Peterson, Bateman and Johnson. They brought their pet canaries to Norwich which would become a popular hobby for local people of the city and would also become the colours and nickname of Norwich City Football Club. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, share, comment and subscribe on YouTube and like Lost Norwich on Facebook.